Good afternoon. Governor Kathy Hochul here with my partners in government, our County Executive Mark Polenkars and Mayor Byron Brown. We have been through a lot of wars together, and this blizzard is the one for the ages. Certainly it is the blizzard of the century. And we are here to talk about our, our, our collaborative approach to dealing with this crisis, and it is a crisis, as well as uh, joined by our incredible teams. I'll be introducing our representatives from the state who've joined here. Uh, we spent Christmas in downtown Buffalo in a hotel yesterday, and I appreciate everyone, and all the first responders and uh, the National Guard who are here, all our local police and fire professionals uh, for away from their families so we can keep your family safe. By Commissioner of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, Jackie Bray, and the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Marie Therese Dominguez, as well as our police superintendent, uh, Western New York Zone, Steve Nigrelli. Um, I did ask to uh, go out around the city this, this morning and face some of the sites and mostly to thank people. I was at the uh, Buffalo Police Garage 
uh, talking to the team of police lot team as well and talk about how they have been out there, talking to them personally about their experiences going into homes, uh, going into vehicles and then too many tragic times of finding people who did not survive the experience. And I want them to know that we know that it's difficult work to do. And they're grieving inside as we all are for the families who are getting the horrible, heartbreaking news that their loved ones succumbed to the storm over the last day or two. And is, uh, our hearts are breaking for them. And we'll be there to support their families and get them through this, but also the people who are the ones who find their loved ones. It does take a toll. And I wanted these people, as tough as they know they are, to know that uh, we need to make sure that they can handle the circumstances they're in because none of them ever thought they'd be doing on their Christmas holiday either. So I wanted to thank them. I also had a chance to see some plowing operations on Route 33, the DOT. Extraordinary what they've been doing. And it was very important to keep Route 33 open because that is a gateway to one of our major hospitals, ECMC. So we had to make sure that the doctors and nurses and professionals could get to their jobs as well as clearing a path for ambulances and other emergency vehicles to get to the hospitals as well. So I had a chance to go thank them. Also stop by our, the Maston Avenue Armory to talk to the men and women of the National Guard who've come in from all over the state, have been deployed there over uh, 400 strong, more are on the way and we're gonna continue uh, having them involved in our missions, uh, search and rescue, plowing, traffic enforcement, bringing food and water to our our warming shelters and to our first responders as well as medical transport to get people uh, where they need to go. And in fact, one such case, uh, we had a situation where the head of surgery at ECMC was trapped in a vehicle with his elderly mother and uh, they're running out of fuel and they're rescued by our state fire teams as well who have been doing an extraordinary job. I don't think a lot of people talk about the state fire teams, but uh, they have been everywhere, really the, the backbone of this operation for us. So that is what I just witnessed on the ground this morning. I'm in downtown Buffalo, we'll continue to be here. And as much as we can see the skies right now, we know that uh, the storm is coming back. We're expecting another six to, tw or six to 12 inches. And in the south towns, the southern part of Erie County, a little bit south of here, uh, they had 30 to 40 inches of snow overnight. So anyone who declares victory and says it's over, it is way too early to say this is a, at its a completion of, uh, maybe the severity is downplaying now, and right now it's not as bad as it had been over the last. It is still a dangerous situation to be out. And that is why the driving bans and county executive and the mayor can address what's going on in their municipalities, but the driving bans that we have here at the state level the New York State Thruway Authority closed from the Pennsylvania border all the way to Henrietta near Rochester. That is because we still have scores and scores of vehicles that were abandoned when people left during the storm or just in a ditch they can't possibly get out. We have had snow plows, major snow plows and rescue vehicles. I saw them myself in ditches buried in snow. So those circumstances are still difficult. We need to have the roads open to continue plowing and salting and removing all those vehicles. So the throughway will remain closed until further notice. We're assessing right now uh, what the conditions will be over the next few hours and decide when we can get it open safely. Also closed are the routes 190, the route 400, 219, and route 5. Those are the main arterials that the state is responsible for. Um, back to the search and rescue, our teams alone in the county and the city have their own stores. We had over 550 rescues uh, transporting people all over, people from out of town who had no idea what they were in for. It's extraordinary. Uh, the people in Williamsville and in, in, uh, in Christmas Eve rescued by a uh, plow team of six, family of six was rescued. Uh, it, was, it was a very frightening experience for all of them and I'm so grateful that we had our plow drivers literally involved in the rescue as well. And that uh, goes to the testament of the hardworking state workers and officials and partners we had working uh, all, uh, as well. So the National Guard's on the ground. We have the weather forecast, not that great, but it's improving. And I also wanna mention what's going on in Watertown, another site in the state that we're responsible for assisting with and constant communication with their leadership team, the county and the mayor of Watertown. They're continuing to get more snow, another three inches per hour is coming down, and uh, some of the roads in that area are closed. So I just wanna say a couple things. This has been a joint effort, and I want the people of Western New York to know who are frustrated uh, that we are working so hard 
and the people around us are working so hard, and I'm grateful for all of them. But if you're that mom at home with kids who've been out of power for a long time, that was me not that many years ago. I know the experience. It is frightening. It is, you know, exasperating. And you're just saying, when is this going to end? I understand that pain and that frustration intensely. And we'll be getting through this together very soon. I feel confident of that. But the most important thing is, please stay at home for the next day. Luckily, the kids are off school. Otherwise, we would have been having to deal with uh, the loss of learning. And also making sure that, you know, since today is a holiday and over the weekend was a holiday, it's a big travel weekend. But uh, hopefully those of you who aborted your plans to travel out of state will continue and stay off the roads so we can continue to rescue people get them safe, and make sure that the roads are clear so we can reopen our community as soon as humanly possible. That is our desire here today. Uh, Mayor Byron Brown, I want to thank you again for all you have done. And again, I had a chance to see the Buffalo PD in operation. These people are working so hard. They're so dedicated. And uh, what they've had to see and witness over the last few days with the fatalities uh, that we've been talking about, is, is, uh, it is just extraordinary to know what they go through. They're all human beings as well. And this has to have a, an effect on them. And uh, they were also separated from their families. So continue to give our, our gratitude to the Buffalo Police Department, their SWAT teams, their rescue teams, and everyone else. And also Rochester has sent people. Rochester Police Department is here. Our National Guard is here from Rochester, uh, from Niagara County, from Syracuse as well. So this is an all-hands-on-deck from the state of New York to help the people of Buffalo and western New York altogether. So Mayor Byron Brown. Uh, thank you very much, Governor Hochul, and thank you for your great leadership, your coordination, your communication. Uh, I have been in constant contact with Governor Hochul directly, uh, as well as the Commissioner of Homeland Security, uh, the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, uh, and the Superintendent of State Police. Uh, I thank them for the resources um, uh, that they have provided to the city of Buffalo. We have also been in constant and close communication with County Executive Mark Polencars, and I thank County Executive uh, Polencars for his uh, support and communication as well. Uh, the focus of the city's operations have been on life safety, uh, plowing to uh, get to motorists that have been stranded in vehicles, uh, plowing to help emergency personnel get to emergency medical service calls, and working very closely with National Grid uh, to help National Grid get to power stations and other areas so that they can restore power in the city of Buffalo. At one point, we had more than 20,000 uh, without power in the city of Buffalo. That number is now under 10,000. We continue to work very aggressively with National Grid and uh, to open up areas that they need to get to. Uh, National Grid has provided a list of locations uh, to the city of Buffalo uh, that they need to access. Uh, we've been working uh, not only with uh, city plows, but state resources and county support uh, to get to those locations in the city of Buffalo so that we can restore power as quickly as possible. Governor Hochul talked about uh, the danger and frustration of being in homes uh, without power. Uh, there are some people that have been without power in their their homes since Friday. We know that. Uh, I myself and my family uh, were without power. Uh, I can tell you at one point, it was very uncomfortable. We had to layer up. Uh, we had our five-year-old great-nephew and six-year-old great-niece with us. So we certainly understand uh, the challenges that so many people families are going through and the frustration uh, that people are facing. Uh, as the governor said, the driving ban is still in effect in the city of Buffalo. We are asking people to stay off the roads. Uh, the Buffalo police have literally, in a variety of different uh, ways, provided hundreds of rescues uh, and have rescued many stranded motorists 
in the city of Buffalo. In some of these circumstances, uh, some of these people might not have survived if it weren't for the efforts of first responders to rescue them uh, from vehicles. Uh, Governor Hochul also uh, mentioned uh, the death toll in the city of Buffalo. The Buffalo Police Department uh, has uh, retrieved 18 of these precious souls. Uh, that is uh, not an easy thing to do. Uh, our police officers are, are human. Uh, it is uh, painful uh, to find members of your community that are deceased, uh, those that are deceased, uh, actually uh, on streets in our community who were trying to walk out during storm conditions, got disoriented and passed away out in the street uh, to uh, retrieve uh, fatalities, people who passed away uh, in cars, and to um, uh, retrieve uh, people who passed away in homes. This has been a very difficult and dangerous storm. It's been described as a once in a generation storm and everything uh, that has been forecast, we have gotten in the city of Buffalo and then some. Again, this has been a coordinated effort. Uh, we have worked together very closely. Fortunately, again, with uh, these blizzard conditions, there was a lot of advanced warning gave us the opportunity to plan together to put out messages to the community to the majority of people that heeded those messages I say thank you uh, that has helped us uh, uh, get streets clear uh, uh, get to people that are in distress but as I conclude and get ready to turn things over to County Executive Poland cars I want to make it very clear that we need people to stay off the roads. Uh, you will still get stuck out there. Many streets in the city of Buffalo are still impassable. We have plows on mains and secondaries. We're into residential streets now, but the driving conditions are still very difficult. The, the driving ban is still in, in place. Please do not drive in the city of Buffalo. Uh, now I am going to turn things over uh, to my other partner in government. Thank you, Mayor. And on behalf of the people of Erie County and our team, I want to thank everyone uh, in the city of Buffalo, from Buffalo PD, Buffalo Fire, uh, Buffalo Department of Public Works, who've been working so hard uh, in what was we, was we described as the worst conditions we've ever seen. Uh, so thank you to your team for all that you're doing, and, and especially to all the first responders and law enforcement out there and, and this, the sad task they've had to do of retrieving bodies, not only in the city, but fellow police officers outside of the city in Amherst and uh, Cheektowaga. And to the governor, of course, thank you. She has been here. Uh, she's had her teams on the ground. Uh, we have, I, I, there's so many agencies, so many acronyms, I can't say them all, mm -hmm. but uh, I do want to thank uh, the governor for calling up everyone possible to assist us. And I also have to give a shout out to our friends and colleagues in, across New York State, uh, Nassau County has reached out to us and is sending a group right now of search and rescue. So to County Executive Bruce Blakeman in Nassau County, thank you. Uh, Adam Bellow in Monroe County of there has reached out. They're sending folks from Monroe and Rochester. Uh, Dan McCoy from Albany County, also the same thing. Albany County is sending additional assistance so that we can get the community open as quickly as possible. As the mayor noted, there's still a driving ban, of course, in the city of Buffalo, but there also is driving bans in Amherst. Chictawaga, Evans, Hamburg, and the city of Lackawanna. Uh, at this point, uh, those are all going to stay into effect at least through the daylight hours and probably into the overnight hours and to tomorrow morning as well. Uh, we were able to lift the driving ban in the town of West Seneca. It is a driving advisory in the town of West Seneca now. That does not mean it is easy to drive, and if you don't have to go anywhere, please don't. Uh, there are still uh, walls of snow along some of the main roads which make it difficult. They have to cut those down. They have to expand roads from curb to curb. It hasn't happened totally yet, uh, but after consultation and the request of uh, West Seneca Supervisor Gary Dixon, we did agree to lift the driving ban for the town of West Seneca. Uh, at the 9:30 press conference, uh, the Erie County Department of Mental Health or Mental Health, the Erie County Department of, uh, of Health Medical Examiner's Office 
uh, has confirmed 25 deaths across Tallaverry County. Those also include uh, those in the Ciclo. Uh, there are some the City of Buffalo may have, have that our Department of Health has not been able to confirm yet and are in the process of confirmation. Uh, as was referred to me last night uh, by uh, the Health Commissioner, uh, last night was a very bad night. As we know, we had 12 additional deaths uh, that we confirmed compared to the 13 that we had announced by 11 o'clock last night. And many of those came in in the late night, overnight hours, and our team from the medical examiner's office had to work with the area hospitals as well as what was received uh, at the morgue to uh, try to confirm those. Uh, and it, it was a tough night, and we do expect that there will be more uh, as there are additional individuals that are found across our community. Uh, I can just say the same thing on behalf of myself. Uh, our commissioner of the Department of Public Works, William Gary, is here. Stay off the roads. The ban is in place not to inconvenience you. It's to help us get through this as quickly as possible to open up communities so that we can get in uh, and do what we need to do so that we can open up as fast as possible. But we are still getting reports of individuals who are not only going out, but getting stuck. Here we are. Storm started on Friday. No, people want to get out, but there are people who are going out, and we don't think for really a good apparent reason, who are getting stuck on roads that we had previously cleared or were attempting to clear. And all you're doing is hindering our uh, efforts to respond, including, and most importantly, life-saving response. Uh, we had to uh, dig out and help get uh, a number of ambulance companies so that they could get their ambulances back in service. Uh, we have ambulances coming as mutual aid from outside of the Erie County, but if we send them to a place, if somebody's having a heart attack or a major issue and they can't get down the road because now someone's, you could cost somebody's life. So please, stay home. And once again, thank you, Governor, for all that you're doing and the team is doing. Uh, it is uh, making this uh, operation uh, at least faster from a standpoint of having every available equipment and apparatus and people uh, that we can. Uh, the snow when it fell was with a vengeance, with a ferocity, and during that period when we had to pull all the, the, the troops off, uh, it was the worst I've ever seen. And I did live through the blizzard of 77. So thank you for all the work that they're doing. Thank you. Any questions at this time? Uh, in the interim, I'll just say that we've also sent our request for an emergency disaster declaration to the White House. Uh, we want to make sure that our localities know to keep track of their expenses uh, in search of reimbursement from the federal government. The White House, as we've all spoken to, but I spoke to the Chief of Staff, to President Biden on Christmas Day, they said they'll have an almost an immediate turnaround for us, which I'm grateful for their interest in helping all of us uh, be made whole after going through this. And they needed, they said if there's anything else we possibly need, they will be there for us. And so I'm grateful to the White House, the Biden administration, uh, for their response on that as well. Governor, can I make a, a couple of sure. acknowledgments just very quickly? I want to um, also acknowledge the county executive was, was good to acknowledge some of the county executives that reached out. I want to um, acknowledge uh, Rochester Mayor Malik Evans, who reached out to offer assistance, Syracuse Mayor Ben Walsh, who reached out to offer assistance, Mount Vernon Mayor Sean Patterson Howard, who re reached out to offer assistance. And all of us have heard from um, uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, um, and Attorney General Letitia James offering support as well. So the whole state is showing their love for Western New York. Any questions? Thank you, Governor. Your first question is going to be from Dominic Lavallo from Section 1. I'm going to unmute your line, Dominic. Go ahead, Governor. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, uh, everyone there. Uh, thanks for taking the time for us. Uh, so, I think that's a public record. Very similar question this morning in an earlier briefing. But uh, we're hearing a lot of reports of people who are just with either without power and running out of resources. Is there any services coming into place 
Well, first of all, I'll have the commissioners respond to her managing the operations, but their frustration is real. Uh, I understand that, you know, being in a place where you're saying, why are the plows going by? Why am I still home? Why am I having trouble getting food from the grocery store? Uh, this is real. This is trauma on a family and then an individual. And I want to acknowledge that. And that is why we are working with such urgency to deal with a wide scale storm. If this had been a narrow band and we could identify a finite geographic area, it's easier to throw in a lot of resources. But when this first started, this was declared to be a statewide event. And obviously it's lingered far longer over Western New York than we anticipated, particularly uh, this part of Erie County and the city of Buffalo. So we're working really hard to get the resource to you. But uh, no, their frustrations are real. I'm here to acknowledge that. And uh, Commissioner Bray, if you have anything on the delivery of services or uh, the county executive. Yeah, uh, two things. The first is that in terms of power restoration, we had about almost 23,000 uh, households with power in the county last night. We're down to about 12,500. So power is coming back on. Uh, there were four substations damaged that uh, provided power to the city. Um, of those four, two, all four are fully re-energized. Two are not only re-energized, but all of the distribution circuitry is fixed. Uh, the other two are re-energized, but we're still fixing, or the National Grid is still fixing that distribution energy uh, uh, circuitry. Uh, and so we are doing everything we can to restore power to those uh, who continue to not have power. In terms of the plow operations, right now plow operations are focused on life safety. That has meant Number one, making sure that first responders can get where they need to go. Number two, making sure that hospital personnel, other medical personnel can get where they need to be. Uh, number three, transporting emergency medical calls. That might mean that people see a plow passing their residential streets. We don't want to plow you out. We do want to plow you out. Uh, but given the intensity of the storm and the amount of cars that are stranded and trucks that are stranded, we've had to use those plowing resources for emergency response. Um, as soon as we are able uh, to move those resources to the residential streets, we will. The best thing people can do is to stay off the road so we don't have additional uh, stranded vehicles. Uh, in terms of resources, we have been able to supply firehouses uh, in the city with food and water. Um, and so we will do the best we can to make sure that people have access to what they need as we're getting folks going again. Uh, Jonathan, there has been uh, some looting in the city of Buffalo. Let me just uh, mention my team that I'm with very quickly, and then I'll turn that over to Police Commissioner Grimalia. Obviously, we're here in Police Fire Headquarters uh, at Dillon in downtown Buffalo. Uh, uh, Police Commissioner Grimalia uh, has been working around the clock. Uh, we're also here with Public Works Commissioner uh, Nate Martin, who has been working around the clock. I'll have uh, Commissioner Grimalia at this time uh, talk about the looting and the police response to that. Thank you. So, yeah, we, we are aware of reports of looting. We've seen some of that on social media. Uh, our officers have responded to several reports. We have made a few arrests. Uh, we have intervened in some of those. We've assisted uh, at least uh, one location that I'm aware of right now in getting a store boarded up. So. Our officers are out there. We've uh, been able to, throughout the storm, transition our patrol officers uh, to get back more concentrated on their patrol efforts while we have our search and rescue and recovery teams uh, that are going out and doing the very difficult work of uh, recovering bodies and also doing check the welfare calls. So we have made the transition. Uh, we are aware of it. We are dealing with it. And, you know, of course, we don't condone it. I want to I wanna add to that, if I may. I just want to add that people who are out looting when people are losing their lives in this harsh winter storm is just absolutely reprehensible. Uh, I don't know how these people can even live with themselves, how they can look at themselves in the mirror. They are the lowest of, of the low. And 
from some of the pictures that we've seen in social media of these looters, uh, they're not looting foods and medicines. They're just loot looting items that they want. So these aren't even people in distress. These are people that are taking advantage of a natural disaster and the suffering of many in our community to take what they want uh, from retailers, also potentially putting those services at risk in the communities where they are looting. Uh, Jonathan, you also asked about price gouging. Price gouging is illegal. And we have the Attorney General's Office and our state is prepared to investigate any complaints of price gouging. And those who engage in this disgusting practice at a time when people are hurting, that they are trying so hard to get basic necessities, there's a store that's been closed since Friday, well then shame on them and they're gonna meet the law in a way that they probably did not encounter. So we're gonna be going after them. Uh, I also wanna say that the Department of Social Services is engaging the insurance industry, making sure that we have claims adjusters on the ground to help people who've had damage, whether it's the weight of snow on their roofs, uh, whether it's water damage in places like my building where the pipes burst from being frozen. So we wanna make sure that people help to them as soon as possible. And uh, one more mission I wanted to say that's important for everybody to know. Uh, people who've been violating our traffic bans may have thought that they could get away with it. They are wrong. There are consequences. You will be ticketed. And part of our National Guard responsibility is going to be standing there at intersections and questioning people. And certainly someone who's a first responder or has a medical emergency, a doctor or nurse getting their jobs, they're clearly welcome on the roads. We wanna make sure they get there safely. But anybody else, uh, you are risking getting a ticket in a very embarrassing situation if you're caught. And we're gonna be bringing reinforcements to enforce this. Otherwise, we can't get the job done to get the roads back open so everybody else who's following the rules, following the laws, and I'm grateful for all the vast majority of Western Europe who are doing what they're asked to do even though it's uncomfortable and it's a sacrifice. But we want them to get back to life as normal as soon as possible. And those lawbreakers who are just ignoring our bans right now are standing in the way and they're gonna face the consequences. The storm is historic to us. That's become a way of life in our state. And that's a result of climate change, as you see, see extreme weather events all over our country. But all of us in state and county and local government know we have to be prepared for the next big one. I said this literally days after we were embedded in Buffalo for it seemed like four or five days trying to get through an epic storm, the most snow ever deposited in a 24-hour period in the history of New York State. And we had to get through this region being paralyzed. But the very next day, we knew the next storm could literally be a day away, a week away, a month away. And we have been prepared. We made sure that all of our inventories, our stockpiles were brought up to where they need to be. So the state has plenty of gasoline, for example. We have been able to go out using state gasoline resources through state fire to literally fuel local first responder vehicles because we had enough. We have MREs stockpiled everywhere. Our Camp Road facility in Hamburg, uh, right where I used to live, uh, has thousands of MREs ready to be distributed to food banks and to get for people, medical supplies. So you're right. We have a responsibility to have all these resources on hand. But when Mother Nature is literally shuts down and creates a wall that you cannot see past, it is not safe for not just emergency vehicles, but the trucks that are bringing groceries to the stores and the stores are shut down anyhow. So that is the paralysis we're experiencing, but we do have the warming shelters stood up. 
We had plenty of cots and blankets. And so people are taking advantage of this, something that, is, again, it's our responsibility to be ready for. And I'd like uh, Commissioner to Home Security and Emergency Services, Jackie Bray, to talk about our other preparations. Sure, absolutely. So prior to any storm, including the, the previous two historic storms, we begin local coordination days in advance. Uh, we coordinate across state agencies with our county and our local partners. As the governor said, we open all of our stockpiles, we refresh all of our stockpile inventories, and we bring in heavy equipment from around the state to pre-position appropriately. In terms of the historic nature of both of these events back to back, as the governor said, we are seeing an increase in uh, extreme weather. Uh, we know that. And so what we're doing is when we get forecasts, we're working far more hand in glove with forecasters than we ever have before to make sure that we have real time information and to make sure that we can imagine how bad something will be. Part of what we have all had to do over the last couple of years of extreme weather is to change the realm of the possible in our own imagination. Um, as everyone said, no one thought we'd see a blizzard worse than the one of Evan here, and we did this week. So we're working hand in glove with forecasters to make sure we understand how bad it really can get. And I'll just add on that the pre-positioning of equipment is critical. And that is why literally the day before, you know, we had talked about days before, how we can bring in resources, more woman power, and starting with our utilities. We knew that if the power went out, that this could be life-threatening because of the Arctic chills. And so we had the norm is for the state 5,000 utility workers. We told them to ramp it up. We had 7,000 utility workers deployed, ready to came to Western New York. So it has not been a challenge of, of resources or equipment because we had hundreds and hundreds of snow plows and personnel pre-positioned waiting for this storm to come. It became the inability to move once the snow started with the ferocity that it, that it hit us with. So you could not safely travel even though you had enough personnel and equipment. And that became uh, one of the challenges that no preparation can help you overcome. But the second there's a the weather, we're out there with, with plows and, and emergency crews and doing everything we can, to in our, especially with our life-saving uh, missions, which is priority number one for us. If I could. Certainly. We also work to inform the public the forecast was early. We knew what was coming. We knew how bad this storm was going to be. Days in advance of the storm hitting on Friday morning, we put out messages to the public through news conferences, through social media, through radio, telling the public, uh, buy your groceries by Thursday night. Um, have family members that are going to travel to be with you have them move up their travel plans so they are with you by Thursday night. We told people uh, to purchase candles and flashlights and batteries. We said if you have to do last minute Christmas shopping, do it by Thursday night. All those messages were put out by the governor, uh, by the county executive, by myself, days in advance so the public could be prepared and would not have to try to drive on Friday in a storm, on Saturday in blizzard and whiteout conditions. So we were prepared. Uh, the forecast did come early. Uh, the forecast of a once in a generation storm was accurate, and that was communicated to the public. If I can reiterate, this was not a lack of apparatus. This was not a lack of personnel. We were at the mercy of Mother Nature. It's as simple as that. When we have our multi-ton uh, uh, snow plows and trucks and high lifts that we have to bring in because they have the best traction, they have the ability to go up some of the craziest hills we have in the county, when we have to bring them in because it's too dangerous for them to be out there and we had to bring them in for hours and hours and hours. Uh, it doesn't matter if you had a thousand more pieces of equipment and ten thousand. Well, there's still nothing you could have done in that period. It was that bad. I know it's hard for people to believe, but, but it was like lo looking at a white wall for 14 to 18 hours straight, depending where you were. Three feet in front of you, at your front of your hood of your car, was nothing but a white wall. 
And uh, uh, as somebody who's lived here pretty much my entire life, who lived through the blizzard of 77, uh, the, that 18-hour period was the worst period of weather I have ever seen. And other people who've got a lot more experience than me said the same thing. No, thank you. I just want to thank the people of Western New York for hanging in there. Uh, I know how hard this is. You've been doing what we've asked you to do, by and large. And again, the end is almost here, but let's make sure we get through the five days safely and, and keep, keep all of our first responders and the snowplow drivers and everyone else who's out there in a uniform to keep all of us safe. Keep them in your prayers. Thank you very much.